I'd like to share with you what I think is the most interesting piece in my collection. Now, you guys know me. I don't have a very large collection. In fact, you could argue my collection is pretty boring, pretty predictable, and nothing seems to stick around very long. I mercilessly axe or flip amazing pieces that I love, and I replace them with other amazing pieces that I love. So technically, you could argue that I don't have a watch collection, but I do collect watch experiences, and that's how I really enjoy this hobby. And this experience here in front of the camera, the Lacoute branded Atmos clock from the 1950s, is one that I've wanted for a number of years. And I'm just, I don't know, it's been timing. I don't know what it's been, but I finally have been ready to add one to the collection. And I really think that this is going to stick around. I know some of you guys might laugh. You might roll your eyes and say, no way, Bruce, you don't keep things. Uh, this one, I would, I would beg to differ in this instance. So let me share a little bit about it, a little bit about the history and why I'm drawn to this, why I think this is interesting and fascinating and the most, you know, unique piece in my collection. And my collection is comprised of traditional wristwatches, you know, from various brands. I have mostly modern. I have a couple vintage pieces that I don't wear. And then I have this desk clock. I actually also have another Seiko desk clock, a quartz one from the 1990s, you know, that's coming up on 30 years old. But anyways, we're talking about the Atmos clock today. This is a fascinating concept for those of you that are not familiar with the Atmos. The idea is uh, the movement is powered by atmospheric changes in temperature, just a small amount of temperature change, whether it's going from warmer to cooler or cooler to warmer will power the movement. And the idea was developed by an engineer in the late 1920s in Europe named Jean Liard Ruder. And he wanted to create a desk clock that was as close to perpetual motion technology as possible. You know, one that you could set down, forget and it would be accurate. It would be reliable. You didn't have to wind it. And I mean, it's a really ambitious idea if you think about it to mechanically do something like that. I mean, even Leonardo da Vinci all those centuries ago tried to come up with perpetual motion technology and of course wasn't able to do it. But uh, this Atmos, this is very close. This is really cool. So essentially what we have here, we have a bellows system that will expand and contract with atmospheric changes in temperature and thereby power the movement. Again, it's it's kind of like an automatic rotor in your wristwatch. It doesn't matter if the rotor is going in one direction or the other. You know, it's bi-directionally winding. It's the same principle with the bellows system here in the Atmos clock. The original Atmos is that were produced in the 1930s, and there really wasn't very many that Ruder produced, carried mercury within the bellows system, which we know is not the most stable or safe material. And so after, you know, after some time, it was refined and it was switched out for a saturated gas in that bellows system. So the clock in front of the camera today from the 1950s, this one carries an ethyl chloride gas within the bellows and it's very sensitive. So uh, even a one degree change in temperature will power the movement here for about 48 hours or about the amount of time a full wind on my 3135 and my Submariner will run. So it's really cool. And once you get the full power reserve, this will run for over a year. So again, it is very close to perpetual motion. You can set this down, forget about it, and it will just, it will just run. And I've got to say, when I look at this, it's very calming to watch that torsion pendulum, to watch it twist and turn uh, very, very slowly. It takes about 30 seconds to get to the apex in one direction, and then it stops. And for half a second, I'm worried that the clock is broken, and then slowly it starts to spin in the other direction. It's just a very calming thing to see. And normally, it's on my bookshelf that you can see in the background of some of my videos and my live streams. Obviously, I've moved it here to the desk to showcase it and uh, and to, to to film it and photograph it. But this is this is a this is a clock that you don't want to touch. You don't want to bump. You want to keep it level. And within the base here, there's actually a swing out glass front portion. You guys can see a couple screws, and uh, that's for leveling your kit here. So you want to make sure it's level, and you want to make sure you keep it in the same space. Don't move it. Don't jostle it around and it's going to keep good time. If you do have to movement, you wait till that pendulum, that torsion pendulum 
reaches the apex, it's right about to start moving in the other direction. You can lock it with this lever here and then you can transport it. I had to do that to move it from the bookshelf here to the desk, but I mean, it's a really, it's a really beautiful and fascinating concept, right? I think this has stood the test of time when it comes to the materials, but more importantly, when it comes to the idea and the execution, I think this is classically beautiful. And 50 years from now, I think it's going to be even more desirable and watch enthusiasts will appreciate the idea to a greater degree than they may do right now. So again, this one is from the 1950s. This is the 526-5. It's a little bit smaller than some of the other Atmos desk clocks out there. And I like this because it is all gold tone and we have the Romans. A lot of the ones that you'll find, the common ones, will have a white or an opaline ring on the face of the watch. You know, just for legibility's sake, I like the fact that this is a little bit different. And I guess you do sacrifice a little bit of legibility there, but it's so beautiful. Ah, oh, I can't get enough of looking at this, seeing the blued screws, seeing the Le Coute branding. So back to the history lesson, uh, Reuter, again, he produced a few of these Atmos clocks and he had them for sale. One was in Paris in a shop and the manager of Le Coute was coming by. He noticed it. He went into the store. He thought it was really interesting, just like I do, you know, the concept, just like some of you watching this probably think this is really interesting. And so he bought it. And eventually he got in touch with Reuter and uh, they partnered up. Reuter sold the patent to Lacoute. And uh, then after that, actually, Lacoute merged with their competitor, Jaeger. And that was in 1937. That brand became JLC, the watchmaker's watchmaker, the brand that we love and respect as watch enthusiasts today. This Atmos has a really fun history that ties into the pre-JLC merger. And this one, in the 1950s, this one was produced. And I like the fact that it's Lakut branded only, even though at the time, uh, the two brands had merged at that point. So uh, I, I like the history. Honestly, guys, I'm a little bit vain. I like some name cachet, some name brand recognition, you know, Vacheron Constantin, Rolex, Omega. I enjoy, I, I enjoy that to a degree. I'll admit that. I don't think there's anything wrong with liking that. But sometimes it's fun, it's fun to fly under the radar to a degree and celebrate the history. And so that's what this Atmos desk clock, the Lacoute branded desk clock, does for me. It's beautiful. It's historic. It's accurate. The concept is so fascinating. So this is just, ah, this is a proud member of my collection. And you might be saying, Bruce, when are you going to sell it? You know, you never keep anything very long. Well, I don't think I'm going to here. I really don't because I didn't pay all that much for it. These things sell anywhere from $300 to $1,300, depending on the rarity, the condition, if it's been serviced. There's a number of different factors. I paid $800, I believe. It might have been $850 or maybe it was $850 with tax. Uh, it was right around that range. You know, that's what some Seiko tunas are going for. But this is a heck of a lot cooler than a Seiko tuna. That might be blasphemous for me to say, but, you know, I didn't spend all that much. And this is a pain in the butt to move. It's a very fragile system. So, you know, just from a practicality standpoint, I want to keep this. And I think it's really cool. You know, when I was first starting out getting into watches, $1,000 or $800 on a vintage desk clock, that would sound silly. I'd go, no way. No way I'm doing that. I'm saving that money and that's going toward my Marine Master Fund or my Seamaster Fund or an Aquas Fund or whatever, you know, I, whatever had my fancy at the time. But now I look at this and I see the value. I see the history. And I think this is just a lovely execution. Again, it's 70 years old but it looks beautiful. I like seeing the vintage elements. I like seeing uh, the Swiss designation on the face of the watch and the Atmos uh, written just below the Le Coot and C branding. And that branding first debuted in 1866. So again, you know, even though that predated the Atmos clock and concept, it's it's just got so many cool little things to it. And aesthetically, you know, looking at it, it's so balanced. It fills the space well. 
it's just, it's just a stunner. You guys can see I'm fawning all over it right now. I, I might sound like a sap, but um, yeah, I really like this. It is really cool. And I don't necessarily think it's for the, the young or the new watch enthusiast. This is for the season collector. You've had your fun. You've tried the luxury price point. Maybe you've gotten into vintage watches. You've had your German phase. You've had your micro brand phase. You've had your Seiko only phase. You've had your Rolex phase. You know, you, you've kind of been around the block and you just want to add really cool, interesting pieces to your collection or your collection of watch experiences. And I'm just really glad that I've added this one. I think it's uh, stellar. So guys, if you're interested, I'm going to put a link to a couple places. One is my watchmakers watch shop where I purchased this. Uh, some of you guys ask me about this, but I use Chris Howard of Funkhauser Jewelry in Salt Lake City, Utah. He's a one-man show. He does a fantastic job. He's really talented. And no, he doesn't sponsor me or anything like that. Uh, I just like to point out the good guys when I run across them. So I bought this from him, from his shop. He personally serviced this. You know, he texted me, had a couple different versions. And he said, which one do you want? You can pick the one you like more. And so that's where I got mine. I'm also putting a link to a website where you can learn more about the history of the Atmos. You can look up serial numbers. You can look up rare examples, other images, early prototypes. It's a really cool website to spend some time and check out, uh, you know, check out the Atmos clock. So that's going to be in the description. Guys, thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. Please let me know if you have any specific questions. I'd be happy to try to help. And I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you soon.